a very good afternoon to all present. I am Safura Zargar and I am pursuing MPhil from Jamia Millia Islamia. I am best known for my participation in the anti-CEA protest and subsequent unlawful arrest under the UAPA, the dreaded and draconian Unlawful Preventive Activities Protection Act in India, which puts the onus of proving innocence on the accused, that is me. That means that when I was arrested, I was presumed guilty as opposed to the innocent until proven guilty principle of the Indian jurisprudence. The anti-CAA protests sparked off in December 2019 when the Parliament of India unconstitutionally passed the Citizenship Amendment Act, which when read with the NRC can and will render citizens of India, many citizens of India, stateless and thus create a grave humanitarian crisis in India. But at the time I was protesting against this act, little did I know that in the midst of a global pandemic, when our country will go into a nationwide lockdown, I will be booked under the most draconian of laws in India, the UAPA, as punishment for voicing my concerns against a discriminatory and, discriminatory and unconstitutional act. On the 10th of April 2020, while I was speak, sleeping in my house, a team of Delhi Police Special Cell knocked on my door and 15 minutes later arrested me. My in-laws and husband informed them, them that I was pregnant and needed rest. I was not issued any notice for joining the investigation, was not even called for an interrogation even once. I was simply arrested without informing me that I was being arrested. Without an arrest memo, I was taken to the Delhi police special cell where I was interrogated. My phones were seized without a seizure memo. I was told at 10.30 p.m. in the night that I was being arrested and my husband was made to sign on an arrest memo that falsely timed my arrest at 5.30 p.m. All due process of law was bypassed in my case. I was not even informed why I was being arrested and the charges against me. At 11 p.m. in the night, I was asked to sit in the police jeep with seven police persons, only one of them a women constable. I was taken to another police station in Jafrabad, which had no women prison, where I was told to sleep on the floor. I was then produced in front of the magistrate at noon the next day, where I finally met with my lawyers who had to really struggle to get access to me. I was remanded to police custody for three days in the Jafrabad police station. All three days I have slept in different police stations. The conditions of these police cells were not even fit for animals, leave alone humans. After my uh, police custody got over, I was maliciously arrested in another FIR with more serious charges and handed back to the Delhi Police Special Cell for an additional two days of police remand. This was done solely to keep me in unlawful custody. After that, I was remanded to judicial custody and sent to Tihar Jail. On the day of my production, I was denied access to my lawyers, deliberately by misinforming them about my place of production only to bypass all due process of law and punish me for criticizing the government. On the 19th of April, after my lawyers filed for bail and the matter was being heard, the police invoked the UAPA in the case. And bail was not only denied, but all hope for a bail was lost because in UAPA cases, the norm is no bail. Due to a fierce legal battle and an intense media campaign, I was able to secure bail in 74 days, the first in a UAPA case in India. It was only because of the widespread support that I had received, not just in India, but all over the world, and the hard work and diligence of my lawyers who leave no stone unturned, despite being faced with hopeless circumstances. Coupled with the fact that the prosecution could not have produced an aota of proof to support even one of their allegations and charges against me. The case against me is so weak and frivolous that the prosecution was aware that it will not stand in a court of law and hence, to avoid arguing on merits of the case, they decided to bypass it and concede it on humanitarian grounds. Thankfully, it has sparked a serious debate on the UAP under which the conviction rate is only 2.2%, but all those who are charged with the law spend years and years in jail before finally being acquitted. No reparations have ever been made to any of the acquitted persons. In the recent years, the use of UAPA to stifle dissent and gag the press in India has reached unprecedented levels. The international community cannot stand mute to the grave human rights violations happening under the garb of an anti-terror law. Today, I thank all the people who have made this congressional briefing possible and urge the congressmen to unconditionally and unequivocally renounce this draconian law. 
the uapa must go reparations must be made to all those maliciously prosecuted the security agencies must be held criminally accountable for misuse of power and malicious prosecution thank you